Hello and welcome to C2G Discuss, a series of moderated conversations between experts to explore the governance challenges raised by emerging approaches to alter the climate. I'm Mark Turner and I'm talking today with Janos Pastor, who is the Executive Director of the Carnegie Climate Governance Initiative, to introduce the topics and goals of this series. Welcome Janos to C2G Discuss. Thank you. Let's start with um, you know, the basics of, of what this series is about. What are climate altering approaches and why does the world need to consider them? Well, basically climate altering approaches are how we describe in C2G a set of emerging potential interventions in the climate system that will help to address the climate crisis. They would not replace traditional mitigation such as emission cuts, but given the increasing intensity of climate impacts and the urgency of action, they could offer new and additional ways to reduce climate risk. Now, the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in its latest report has left no doubt as to the severity of the crisis and how little time we have left to limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. We may need all the tools we have available to tackle it. No one solution will work alone but there is still a lot that needs to be learned about these emerging approaches. And they bring along a whole new set of challenges which would need to be addressed. Now, on the one hand, they include techniques to directly remove billions of tons of excess carbon dioxide already in the atmosphere, and then store it away permanently. This is known as carbon dioxide removal and might be thought of as a bit like cleaning up carbon pollution, but it's easier said than done. While there are many ideas on how to do this, most are still in their infancy and governments and the private sector do not know yet how to safely scale them up cost effectively and in ways that will stand the test of time. There's also another set of techniques to cool the planet directly by reflecting sunlight back into space, known as solar radiation modification. These approaches, which also vary and all bring challenges, would not directly address the source of the problem, but could, if governed and implemented properly, help reduce climate impacts or avoid dangerous tipping points while the world completes decarbonization. Now, the IPCC has been saying for years that carbon dioxide removal will be necessary, given insufficient action by governments to reduce emissions and to decarbonize the world economy to date. We now know the huge scale of the removal challenge. Uh, the August 2021 report of Working Group 1 of the IPCC depicts how challenging the deep emissions cuts and also the needed carbon dioxide removal will be. Some analysis indicate that even these together may not be enough to keep warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius or less. And therefore, the world may need to consider solar radiation modification approaches as well. Now, of course, in all cases, these emerging approaches will need a sustained process of learning, discussion, and international decision making that involves a large number of different people. And this is part of what we mean when we at C2G talk about governance. Given this challenge uh, that you've outlined, how much consideration of these approaches is now underway? Um, and what is stopping or in the way of of a more comprehensive discussion emerging. And perhaps we'll, we'll take each in turn, start with carbon dioxide removal, and then move on to solar radiation modification. Yeah, it's, it's a good idea to take them in turns because they are actually quite different. So first, uh, large scale carbon dioxide removal is beginning to be considered. Research as well as limited commercial deployment is taking place in different parts of the world, but many of the governance challenges still need to be addressed. However, national, and international institutions do exist with the appropriate mandates to consider, address, and resolve challenges and opportunities in this area. At the international level, the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, the UNFCCC in particular, but also the Convention on Biological Diversity and the London Protocol of the London Convention are particularly relevant. Now, the situation for solar radiation modification is quite different. Uh, first of all, it is still a theoretical concept. Some limited research is taking place about the potentially available technologies, the risks, the benefits, and the governance challenges. It is, however, not well understood. Neither the potential benefits, such as the rapid cooling of the planet it could provide, 
nor the many risks, some even unknown risks, nor the ethical, justice, and general governance challenges it poses. Moreover, comparing the risk of doing something needs to take place not in isolation, but compared to the risks of not doing so. There needs to be a much wider level of discussion amongst relevant stakeholders. Some of the solar radiation modification techniques, like stratospheric aerosol injection, would be global in their application and impacts, and therefore would need global level consideration, such as in the United Nations. But these ideas and solar radiation modification in particular make a lot of people nervous. Some fear that even considering some of these approaches, let alone deploying them, could undermine efforts to accelerate decarbonization. Others fear that humanity simply does not have the right nor the capability to manipulate the one global atmosphere we all rely on. Now, because of such concerns, and given some quite strident opposition from pressure groups, we find that policymakers have been reluctant to talk about these in public or back their research. At the same time, we also see a growing understanding that achieving our climate goals is a difficult challenge and that consequences of not achieving them are extremely serious. In order to bridge the gap, we at C2G believe different stakeholders need to come together and have conversations about the potential role, if ever, of solar radiation modification. In the context of these concerns, uh, at the same time, the urgency, how is C2G helping to catalyze these discussions to bring people on board? And perhaps you could say a little bit about C2G's priorities to achieve that over the next three years. Okay, so C2G's mission is to contribute to the strengthening or the development of governance frameworks for both carbon dioxide removal and solar radiation modification. We do this by catalyzing actors in different, mainly in intergovernmental, but also some other non-state actor processes to learn and improve understanding of the risks, benefits, and governance challenges and opportunities of these techniques. Now, we do this by first explaining to policymakers what these ideas are, what kind of challenges are involved. We then discuss what processes might be needed to help society learn more and improve understanding of their risks, benefits, and governance challenges by incorporating these issues on their respective agendas. On that basis, governments can start to take decisions about whether to use these techniques or not, and if so, how. For our part, we have no specific view on what governance should look like. Although we do think that discussions need to be as inclusive as possible. And therefore the United Nations is clearly an important location for these conversations in order to improve learning and understanding. Neither are we promoting any one approach or another, but rather saying that these ideas exist, they're important and that they need governance. Now in the past, we have worked equally on carbon dioxide removal as well as solar radiation modification. As more and more actors engage in the former, we have now decided to focus increasingly on the latter. Our strategic priority for the next two years is to catalyze an initial consideration in the UN General Assembly of the potential role of solar radiation modification to hinder or advance sustainable development goals, and in particular, for addressing global tipping points. So how might C2G discuss and other C2G activities help bring a broader cross-section of policymakers into this discussion? Our C2G Discuss series engages decision makers and their advisors in discussing issues of current interest with guests representing different political, geographic, and gender contexts. We hope that by participating in these debates, but also listening to the other debates, watching these discussions, decision makers better understand not just the issues themselves, but get a sense of the wide variety of perspectives and thereby begin to take appropriate action themselves as well. So what does success look like for C2G? Well, clearly the ultimate sign of success is that we see responsible governance discussions starting to take place in earnest at the international level. At that point, our catalytic work would be done. But in many ways, the real work would then begin the broadening out of these discussions to society as a whole, and eventually taking some very difficult decisions under what is likely to remain an uncertain and controversial area.
Another sign of success would be the willingness of some intergovernmental secretariats actually taking over the series and building it up on an ongoing basis. Well, let's hope that success is reached. Yep. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Pastor. You're welcome. Uh,